Hello, my name is Jalen Avila, and in this five minute Zono video, we are going to discuss pulsed wave Doppler and continuous wave Doppler. Now, both of those fit into the category of spectral Doppler. And before we talk about the continuous wave and pulsed wave Doppler, we got to talk about how to get a good signal. The first thing is make sure that you have the signal as much as you can in the center of the blood flow. If you measure the center, you're gonna get the most accurate signal. If you're closer to the edges here, it's gonna be a lower velocity and you won't get an accurate signal. Just think about a river. If you're in the center, there's gonna be a speed of the water. And if you're at the shore, the speed is gonna be a lot less, right? You wanna measure it right in the center. The other thing is that you have to make sure to have some kind of an angle between the signal to the transducer and the flow. If you're at 90 degrees, it's some trigonometry thing that I'm not gonna go into here. If you're at 90 degrees, you'll get no Doppler signal back. But if you're at an angle, then you'll get a signal. If the flow is going more towards the transducer, it's more of a positive deflection, you're gonna get flow here towards the transducer, it'll show a positive. And if you happen to have flow away from the transducer, it's gonna give you a negative spectral envelope here because the blood flow is going away from the transducer. The best angle is of course, if you're directly zero degrees, you're perfectly aligned with it or 180 degrees, that's when you're gonna get the strongest signal, but really anything better than 60 degrees is good. So anything between 60 and 90, you're not going to get a great signal. 60 and less, you're going to get a great signal and aim for that. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the core ultrasound.com website. That is ultrasound podcast, five minutes, sono ultrasound of the week, clip bank. And we also have our courses page where we have the core ultrasound fundamentals and core ultrasound question bank, where you have 3,200 questions with feedback, including narrated videos explaining the question, check it out and back to your video. So. As I previously mentioned, spectral Doppler is gonna include pulse wave Doppler as well as continuous wave Doppler. There's a couple of things to kind of differentiate between the two. The big one here is the way that they look. Now over here with the pulsed wave Doppler, we have a bit of a gate and the ultrasound machine is only gonna sample what is right in the middle of that gate right there. And you can actually widen this, you can move this up and down and it'll always only measure what's in between or inside of that gate, whereas the continuous wave Doppler is gonna measure velocities along this entire thing. Now, going back to the pulse wave Doppler, you can actually set a little bit of a correction here if you're not at that better than 60 degree angle. This is all adjustable on most ultrasound machines. Now, the way it works is pulse wave Doppler is doing intermittent sampling, so it's very similar to the B mode or the grayscale imaging where it'll send out a sound wave and listen. Whereas with continuous wave Doppler, it's gonna continuously sample and listen because it has a piezoelectric crystal or a set of piezoelectric crystals sending out the sound wave and another one continuously listening. This is gonna be better at higher velocities, such as what you see with things like aortic stenosis, where the velocities might be super high, like three, four, five meters per second. Continuous wave Doppler works really well for those higher velocities. Let's start off by talking about pulsed wave Doppler with a little example. This is the carotid artery in long axis. And right now I'm gonna have a signal that is positive, And that is because blood is moving in this direction, which you see how it's tilted kind of up a bit. It means that it is moving towards the transducer, giving us this positive signal. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate the transducer 180 degrees. It's the same vessel, it's the exact same blood vessel, but we flipped it and now blood is gonna be moving this way or away from the transducer. So it's gonna give us a negative deflection right here, negative deflection. Because blood is moving this way, this is a little lower, further away from the transducer than here, giving us this negative deflection. So remember, the Doppler signal is all about directionality relative to the probe itself. There's so much more that we can talk about here. If you really want a good review on the nuances of 
Pulse Wave Doppler, please check out this PubMed article. Next, let's move on to continuous wave Doppler, which is quite similar. The difference between continuous wave Doppler and pulse wave Doppler, besides the fact that continuous wave Doppler has this little diamondy thing right here, is it's going to be measuring the velocities across this entire line, not just what's in there. Remember, with pulse wave Doppler, it only is going to sample what's inside that gate. And we're seeing here, this is the right side of the heart. This is the atrium, the right atrium. This is the tricuspid valve, and this is the right ventricle. What we're seeing here is flow going away from the transducer through the tricuspid valve. It shouldn't be doing that. Blood should only be moving towards the transducer. This is tricuspid regurg. And we're able to identify this with continuous wave Doppler. We can see it with pulse wave Doppler. But if the jet is a higher velocity, continuous wave Doppler would be great. The best example of that is aortic stenosis because there's such high velocities with that. That's it for this five minute Sono video. If you need to contact me, here's how. And I hope to hear from you soon and happy scanning.